Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to get into making game menus for our game. Uh, we're going to start with the main menu, which is the backbone of the entire system. And um, it's important to note here that the main menu is also it's a separate level. Uh, so your game will start off in the main menu level, and then it'll call in the game playing level, which we've already created following along in my demonstration game here. Um, if you're coming in from a different game and you're trying to adapt this to work to your game, I'm going to try to get it uh, as detailed as possible so that you can kind of see what I'm doing and follow along with that logic and maybe be able to take that and then apply it into your own game. Um, if not, you can also follow along with my previous videos to make the game and get to this point as well. All right, so um, without uh, any further delay, let's go ahead and take a look at what I'm talking about here. All right, so I have a demo. This is uh, the game that we've been working on, and I have already created the menu system. And you can see here, it's on the main menu. If I hit play, it will bring up the title screen and our options to be able to quit, start, our options to be able to change settings in the game, and also the credits for the game. And all of these work. They have uh, all the different uh, additional um, screens I guess off of these and you can kind of play around with the different settings and be able to uh, make it work and then um, go back we also have a start also incorporated in this menu uh, the ability to adjust the difficulty level of the game and for this game it's nothing more than just adding additional spiders uh, to each level or each wave rather so that each wave gets progressively harder faster um, so I'm going to go ahead and just jump in here to the easy one again and as you can see, run around, shoot. If I hit the P key, it brings up the pause button and then I have again the options to go in, change the volume level. We can quit, we can resume and for whatever reason the credits are in here again but uh, it seemed like a good idea at the time. So anyway, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and quit from here. It takes you back to the main screen. And then from here you can quit. All right, so everything's functional and we're gonna go through all of these screens. I will probably not uh, show you every single one once we get the uh, concept of how they work. Um, there's no point in showing you, you know, basically the same step over and over again. Uh, we'll just go over the main concepts so that you understand how each of the screens basically work and are connected together and you can add or delete as many of them as you wish to do. All right, so, um, Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at getting set up here. So here is the demo that I have. This is uh, basically the game where we left off. We have the aim reticle on this character, and that is it. There is nothing else added to this uh, screen, and we'll get started. Now, one thing to note, um, I am going to import a bunch of... Uh, of those images I have. I made those in Photoshop and you can use those, uh, you can create your own in Photoshop uh, or you can also just make some basic ones here inside of Unreal Engine until you come up with an idea of what you want to use. All right, so um, the first thing we want to do is we're gonna make a new level. So let's go ahead and jump in here. I'm gonna go ahead and go to File, New Level. I'm just gonna use an empty level. So select the empty level down here and I'm going to go ahead and save this. And let's see here. We're going to save current as. And I'm going to put this into my levels folder. And we're going to name this main menu. Okay. And now inside of our levels folder, we have our main menu, which is open here already. Okay. So let's go ahead and make the next step that we need to do is we need a widget that's going to be part of our main level, right? I have a UI folder already here under my contents. If you have not made a UI folder, that would probably be a good place to start this one at. I am going to create a folder that I'm going to call my main menu, or actually I'm just going to call this one widgets. Okay, and inside that folder, I'm going to right click, 
And I'm gonna go here to my user interface and I'm gonna create a widget blueprint. And I'm gonna call this W underscore main menu. Something like that, okay? Now I'm gonna double click and open it up. I'm gonna save it. I wanna go ahead and uh, kind of center this so I can see what I'm doing here. All right. And let's see here. So this is where our kind of our background image is gonna be and kind of how we're gonna lay everything out. And if you remember from the demo, and I'm going to go ahead and bring this one over real quick. The demo screen looked like this. I have uh, some text in here. This is a background image. Uh, and then another background image with some buttons laid over the top of it. Okay. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in here to my UI. I'm going to create another folder. And I'm going to just call this one my textures. And I'm going to go to my textures folder that I have created all of these uh, different images in. And I'm just going to click and drag and drop them all into this one right here. Okay, so uh, what I did is briefly pause so I could just find all these and get them dug in here without wasting your time anymore. And these are most of the buttons that I'm going to be using. I see that I'm missing a couple background images uh, that I want to grab in here. So I just click and drag and drop them in here. And all right, so with those in there, we're gonna jump back over here to my main menu button. And one of the first things I wanna do is I wanna create that background that's gonna be here, okay? So over here on the left-hand side in our palette, we have a bunch of different choices for our widgets. Now we've gone over this before when we made the HUD for, um, for our character. And what we wanna do is we wanna use an image one I'm gonna slide it over here. Easiest thing to do is just to set it back to zero, zero, put it up in the corner. I can click on it, there we go. And now the screen size that I'm using is 1920 by 1080. Okay, and that's going to fill that whole area out. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I want to get my image in here. So if you're gonna use an image, then, um, this is the best way to do it. It's under appearance called brush, okay? And right here is where we see our image. I'm gonna go back to my main menu. This was my title one right here. I'm gonna select it, and I'm gonna hit the little arrow button, and there I have my character image there, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is bring in the um, title button control, so that little um, panel of buttons that I had, and one of the things that is kind of important to note is that as you're making your different button sizes, and if you decide to build them first here, make sure you're paying attention to what size you're using. And then if you go into Photoshop or GIMP to make them, you would want to use that size to try to get them uh, as close as you can to um, fitting correctly. Otherwise, you're gonna get some distortion. There may be some stretching and things like that. So what I did here was this panel button is an image that's 1000 by 309, okay? And that happened to be the size of um, where I found these images off of the textures.com, okay? So let me go ahead and create another image box. I'm gonna pull that in. And right here on my size, I'm gonna type in 1000 and then 309, okay? And that's what I'm gonna get for my control buttons. Now again, you can use whatever images you want or you don't have to use any at all. You can just put some buttons in here and some texture, uh, some text, okay? So I'm just kind of demonstrating the process I used. Now, again, you're gonna use sizes that, that worked for you and for what you wanted to uh, set them up as. Now this is my panel button here. I'm gonna select it. And again, I'm just gonna hit the arrow button and we're gonna pop that in there, okay? Now, this is just kind of setting up the background. That's all that you know you, I'm doing right now and you can follow along, you can change it up, do whatever you wish. This next piece is where we're gonna start getting our functionality, okay? 
So I'm going to go ahead and compile save. Now, what we want to do is we want to put some buttons in here that are going to create something or make something happen. You have to have some interface, right? And the way we're going to do that is over here on the left-hand side, we have something called a button. So we're going to click and drag. I'm going to drag that into here, okay? And for mine, my button sizes for this screen are about 95 by 95, okay? Now, the other thing to, to note is, again, as long as you keep the ratio, things will to work and fit correctly, even if they're not exactly the same as your X and Y between the both, but if you keep maintain the proper ratio, it should work. So since mine's 95 um, by 95, it should work okay right here, okay? And this is going to be my quit button. And I'm gonna demonstrate the quit button and um, probably, you know, a couple other buttons on here. I'll just uh, demonstrate this one. It's the same process for everything, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate this one. All right, so the quit button, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to now kind of play around with the way it appears here. Over on the right-hand side, um, and you know, I, I got ahead of myself. First, I'm gonna click back on the background. We're gonna play around with the anchors. For this one, because we always want it to be stretched out to the size of your screen, down here in the lower right-hand corner, we're going to select that one. For this one, because we're always gonna kinda of want it to keep it here in the center area, um, I'm gonna go ahead and anchor this one in the middle, okay? Something like that. And then um, for the button itself, I'm also going to put these in the center as well. You see when they default in, they come up here on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna go ahead and center that one. And any additional buttons I bring in, I'll do the same thing. But we're going to set this first one up, and then we'll just duplicate it, okay? All right. So with the button selected, now over here on the right-hand side, we have appearance. I'm going to hit that down arrow, make sure it's open, hit style. And we have under style, we have normal, hovered, pressed, and also disabled. We can also add sounds to the buttons as well. So I'm going to hit the down arrow for normal. And for normal, when it's coming in, for mine, I just had the appearance of the buttons right here. They were just kind of not lit. So I am going to select right here where it says draw as. I'm going to hit none. And now you'll see that it's completely transparent. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is when I hover over it, I want it to light up. Okay. And if I go back to my images here, I have some buttons where they have been lit up. I use Photoshop to take those buttons and light them up. So I'm going to use that one for this image here. And right here where it says box, I'm going to change it to image so that it takes on the image shape. I'm going to do the same thing for pressed. Okay. There we go. Now I do have some sounds that uh, I created or I found actually but I am gonna have to dig around for them. So we'll come back to sound a little bit later on and I'll show you how to add sound into the buttons. We can do that now, um, but like I said, I've uh, forgot where I put them. So we'll do that a little bit later. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and compile and save. The next thing I wanna do is now that I have this button in here and all these different names, let's go ahead and actually name them. I'm gonna select the background image and we're gonna call this background. Okay. There we go. Background image. Okay. And then image number one, I'm going to call this my panel buttons. Okay. This button number one, okay, is going to be my quit button. Right, so I have a quit button now. Now, with it selected, I'm gonna hit Control W and I'm gonna duplicate that button. It's gonna pop in right here by my center point. I'm gonna drag it down here, get it in the general area, and I'm gonna change it from quit to my start button. Okay, and Again, same process. If we just go find your image that you want to use, 
um, and then instead of red we're gonna replace all the red spots with that green one just by hitting a little arrow and now we're all set up for that okay uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pause for a second and locate that sound file so that we don't have to come back to this a little bit later and go ahead and get those set in because as we duplicate we're gonna to want to use that same button sound so let me pause for a second Okay, so now I've got the uh, sound I'm going to use. It's this button high pitch sound. All right, and we're going to use that. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. Go back to my main menu. And I'm going to scroll down to where I have my press sound right here. Right now it says none. I'm going to go ahead and hit that little arrow. Okay, and now that button will make that sound whenever I press it. I'm going to do the same thing for my red one. Now... We can duplicate the option and the credit and do the same thing. But I'm going to go ahead and move forward from here so that uh, um, you can do that on your own. I'm going to go ahead and set up the quit button and the start button. And I'll show you what the blueprints look like for the options button and the credits button. Okay. So from here, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select one of our buttons. Okay. And with the quit button selected... I'm going to go ahead and on the right hand side, if you scroll down all the way to the bottom, you'll see some green pluses. This activity that we want to have happen happens when we press that button. So on clicked. So I'm going to press the on clicked button and you'll see that on clicked quit shows up down here. All right. So um, the quit button is actually really pretty simple. All right. Once we click it, we want to quit game. So drag off from there and type in quit and quit game. Okay. Now that's for this quit button. The pause quit button, when we quit from there, it took us back to our main menu panel. And that was a different setup for that quit button. And I will show you how to do that uh, later on when we get to the pause menu. All right. So we've got that one. So the next thing we want to do is we also want to do the same thing for the start button right so if you notice i'm here in this main panel if i select the quit button look down here the little plus arrow show up this one says view it's already here okay now i'm going to select the start button okay and i am going to hit the little plus button for on clicked and i get my start button okay now this one's going to be a little bit different okay it's going to require us to um call up a different uh, widget, a widget that we haven't made yet. Now, from here, if you were just going to go right into starting your game, you could uh, do that and get it set up as a level and do that right away. But if you notice on my game, I go from the clicked button start to uh, the difficulty buttons first. And I select which difficulty I want to play my game at. So... Um, I'm going to go ahead and put that in here. I'm going to set that up, but we need to make an additional widget in order for that to happen. Okay. Now we don't have to build that widget out yet, but we're going to go ahead and have to create the widget so that we can do this. Okay. So I'm going to go back into my main menu, back into my content folder because I've been bouncing around out of it into my UI, into my widgets. Okay. Here's my main menu. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and I'm going to go back to user interface again. I'm going to do my widget interface. I'm going to type in W underscore and I'm going to type in difficulty. So um, D I F F. Okay, difficulty. Now we've got this widget. We don't need to open it right now, um, but we can uh, do some stuff with it a little bit later. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my main menu. And what I'm going to do is, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this widget that we're on from parent. So we're going to remove from parent. Okay. And the target's going to be self. And then we're going to create a, a widget. Okay. Okay. So create widget. And it should come up like this. Right now it says construct none. Okay, as soon as I put a widget in here, it's going to change the name. And the only widget I have in here besides my main menu and my HUD 
is my difficulty one. So I'm going to click that and you notice it changes to create W difficulty widget. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag off from where it says return value and I'm going to type in add to and it should come with add to viewport. All right. So now we've got that done. Okay. All right. So go back to our main menu. Oh, sorry. Main menu here. And we're going to go back into our designer. Okay. Now you need to make the additional buttons. Okay. We need to have an options button and a credits button. Okay. And what those look like, and I'll go ahead and bring them up the one that's already done. Okay. Here's the start button. Here's the quit button. On clicked credits. Okay. And then we're going to remove from parent. And we need to make the credits widget. And then you're going to add it to viewport just the same as we did with the start button. And then for the options one, you're going to make an options widget if you're going to use options. Now, these are only if you're going to create these type of buttons, if you want to create credits, okay, and you want to create options where you can go in and adjust things like sound, okay. I will show you how to do all that as we move forward through this lesson. But um, this is the start of our main menu. Okay, so now if I press play, What's going to happen is you see my character here. I have this HUD show up um, and all kinds of uh, things happening that we don't really want and we don't even see our widget right now. Okay. So what we need to do is stop this for one. And that's because we're going to need to kind of set up a different game mode over here in our world settings. So if you don't have your world settings open, go to your windows. Um, go over here to world settings and open up your world settings. And then we're going to need to create a game mode. So we're going to go into our blueprints. Okay. And in my game mode, I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a blueprint class. And this is going to be a game mode. So a game mode base. Okay. And I'm going to call this BP and I'm going to call this main menu and underscore GM for game mode, just so I know what it is. Okay. Now, we're not going to do much with it. If I just double click on it and open it, um, you can see that it's just a basic, uh, basic plain old game mode here. We are going to make a player controller and we are going to change this from here. So we're going to be, have to do a couple things on this. So go ahead and create this, open it up, but uh, only because we're going to change these two stats here. All right, so next thing I need to do and really inside this uh, new BP uh, controller we're going to make. So we're going to go right back in here. And I'm going to put that down in here since this controller isn't really going to go to a, a player. Um, but it's just going to kind of give me an empty to control some of the things that are going to happen over here in our world settings. Okay. So again, I'm going to just type uh, into that. Click uh, select um, blueprints. Go to player controller. And we're just going to call this BP player controller okay and now I've got that we're not gonna um, again this isn't going to if I double click on it go to event gra uh, graph we're not really gonna do much of anything in here okay these are just empties that are going to allow us to direct other programs at them and kind of manipulate the way that our main menu is going to look so I'm gonna Again, uh, pop back over here to your BP main menu GM. You can control, you can close that BP player controller. And for this, um, for the player controller class, I'm gonna hit the down arrow and select my BP player controller. And then over here on the def on this default player pawn class, we want to select none. We don't want to have a player pop in there. We're not going to control it. We're not going to let the player move around. Okay, we're going to go ahead and compile it and save it. Okay, and then go back to our main menu. And for our game mode override, we're going to pick our BP main menu GM. Okay, and then for our default player class, you see it says none in our HUD. And then for our player controller class, it should have that BP player controller class in there. So now if I hit play, nothing should happen. Okay. 
All right. So we hit escape and get out of that. Okay, so one other thing we're going to do now is we're also going to need to create a game instance and we're going to use that a little bit later on, but we're going to do it now because we also need to go into our edit project settings, okay? And then our maps and modes. And we're going to make some adjustments in here, okay? So the first uh, thing we're going to do is we're going to um, put in BP game mode up here. We're going to put our defa default class as none. Um, we have our HUD in there from before. And uh, we're going to change our level here to be our main level, our main menu level. Okay. And then um, down here where it says game instance class, this is the next thing we're going to change. So for the moment, I'm just going to move this and park it. And I'm going to go back into my main menu tab down here in my content. And um, I'm going to go ahead and put this in my blueprints. Okay. And in my game mode. And what I want to do is I'm going to create a, a, a game instance. Okay. So I'm going to right click down here. And we're going to go to Blueprint Class. And then here in Search, we're going to type in Game Instance. Okay. And for this one, I'm going to call this BP underscore. I'll call this Wave Game underscore Instance. Okay. So INST, or you can type it out if you want to keep track of it. All right. Now, we're not going to do anything with it right this moment, but it is going to be this game instance that is going to hold information as we change from one level to the next. So basically from the main menu, we want to hold the variables of any sounds that we've adjusted for the sound or volume level, and also any changes that we've made to the difficulty of the game. Because when you go from one level to the next, um, if you don't have some place to store it, store it that stays on the entire time of the game, it'll disappear, right? It'll go away and it'll reset back to default. So we want to um, be able to control that. And that's what this is going to do for us. And then we're going to go back to our project settings, hit this down arrow, and we're going to find our BP Wave Game instance. All right. And that's going to be everything we need for, for that. I'm going to go ahead and close that for now. And the next thing we need to do is uh, we need to go ahead and make it so that the widget will actually work. Right? right now, if I hit play, all I get is this kind of a black screen. I can click from my mouse control, uh, which we also need to fix as well. So I'm going to go ahead and hit stop. And we're going to jump into our level blueprints. Okay, So right up here along the top for our blueprints, we hit the down arrow, open level blueprints. All right. And now... What we're going to do is we're going to use the event begin play. Okay. And in order to get that widget to pop in when we first start, we need to create a widget. Okay. So we're going to go ahead, just like we did before, drag off of there and we're going to create widget. Okay. And just like before, construction none until we hit the down arrow and we want our main menu. Okay. We're going to start with that one. And we're going to add it to our viewport. So I'm going to drag off of here. Okay. And we're going to add to viewport. Right. Okay. And that should get us started. So we're going to compile this and save it. Now, if we go back in and we hit play, there we go. And if we hover over where we have those little buttons, they should do something. And if we hit the quit button, it should quit, right? And it does. And we get the little sound. It was a little weak, but we're going to go ahead and fix that a little bit later too. So we've got everything all set up to get started now on our menu. And like I said, um, these two right here, the options and the credit, if you choose to do that, are similar to setting up the widget that we did for our start button. Okay. So... What we'll do in the next video is we will put in the functionality for our start button and uh, create the widget that is going to take us to our um, next screen, which in this case, when you press the start button in my game, it takes you to the difficulty. 
and I will show you how to set up the blueprints for the difficulty. And um, we'll go ahead and like I said, this is gonna be a several video process because this one took 30 minutes just to get everything set up. I'm hoping that these other ones, although there is a lot more blueprinting done with these, uh, we will get more complicated. Here again, for these two, let me go ahead and just bring this back up over here again. We've got the start button functionality started. We need to do the difficulty one next. We've got the quit button one working. And then we need to set up your credits if you're gonna give credits, okay? And we need to set up the options button if you're going to um, set up an option so that they can uh, go in and change things like sound. So let me show you what those look like here. Um, I don't think I have them open yet. Okay, so our options button, this is options with the sliders. We'll get into setting these up. And pressing the wrong buttons down there. And then the other one, things like the, um, I also have set up some pause button ones. So things like credits, if you want to do credits, okay, setting up a button for this as well. So we'll get the back button in there. Um, and get all that working. Okay, but for now, go ahead and finish getting your main menu functions in. And I've lost where I was, here we go. Getting these in, getting those widgets set up, and you can start creating your own widgets. The next one will go on and we'll add some additional functionality. Okay, so that's it for now. Um, Basically, we get picked up on some of the other ones as I get these videos done. It's going to take me probably the next week or two to finish all of these, uh, maybe a little longer. And uh, just keep checking back. If you have any questions, you can put them down in the comments section. And uh, if you liked what you saw, please uh, like my video. And again, if uh, you want to catch any of my other videos here on my YouTube channel, putting on the Fritz 3D visualization, please, uh, please do so. And I look forward to uh, seeing you in the future.